Howdy everyone, it's me once again, the one and only Killer Dan. And today, as you can see, I'm bringing you yet another episode of Lost Cinema films that were never made. They were meant to, but for whatever reason, they weren't. Just goes to show you, just because you have an idea doesn't necessarily mean everything can be planned out. Even if you are, even if you have a project, even if you have a trailer out, even if you have concept art done, even if you have everything together, even if you have the entire crew, that doesn't necessarily mean that the studio won't put a plug. So this is actually fairly common, more common than you actually think. So I'm digging into the kaiju genre, and for this project here, there's not a whole lot to be known about this really, so excuse some of it if it's is if it's really vague, so it's gonna be Godzilla versus a uh, bio monster. So yeah, so we're gonna go with this kind of approach. This opponent is gonna be, of course, pretty be pretty strong. Of course, a bio and engineered monster. Um, but let's just say, yeah, this was definitely designed to be like a modern day version of Frankenstein's monster. I guess you would say. That I would have like pretty much G cells, I mean, improved G cells. The G cells being the thing that came from Godzilla himself. So it's like another version of him in a sense, but modified into this kind of a thing. And I'm uh, making his uh, skin and whatnot really resistant, of course. So yeah, like a humanoid monster kind of a thing. And uh, it was supposed to be, um, End up in a kind of a creature shaped shifting and whatnot, so yeah, pretty creative there. But it was gonna be released in 1995, so yeah, it was gonna be one of the final films in the Hazes series. Yep, it's gonna take place during that period of time, folks. And as I mentioned before, this is definitely one of my favorite time period of Godzilla films. I was supposed to ignore all the films except for the first one, so. Yeah, this uh, kind of idea uh, was, of course, developed by this one individual who was supposed to be a writer and some sort of animator and whatnot. And this individual actually did something for video games. And, yeah, was actually in the art department when it comes to this kind of video game, of course. I never played it myself, just saying. But the individual was also a writer for... The final entry of the Godzilla Hages series, which was actually made. But yeah. Yeah, that was actually made. Whereas this one was going to be potentially one of the final entries of the Godzilla Hages series, as I mentioned a moment ago. The story for this film was going to be centered around the idea that this thing was created as an attempt in order to eliminate Godzilla once and for all. This colossal bio monster would set out to terminate its target. The two behemoths would eventually class, of course. And in the final act of the story, uh, the grand finale was going to center around that. This would be considered as a double suicide. So yeah, it was going to be pretty chaotic, I guess you can say. But yes, obviously this film was eventually scrapped. But... Why exactly? Well, your guess as good as, is as good as mine. But if I had to take a swing at this... So yeah, thinking about films like Azalea vs. Bailante, yeah, that's definitely one of the most underrated and overlooked films of the entire franchise. Yeah, and um... Yeah, even Godzilla vs. Space, Godzilla wasn't looked all upon all that favorably either. And along with uh, movies like, okay, something kind of recent, uh, the 2014 Godzilla film, which yes, did include a brand new monster, but a lot of, even though it was, it made a lot of money, but a lot of people didn't like it that much. Same with Godzilla with Mega Gears, which yes, has another new monster. Notice the pattern here. Yeah, the reviews weren't that great. Same with um, this one as well, which yes, of course, introduced a new monster. So, yeah, like I just asked a moment ago, noticing a pattern here, this seems to be usually the case. And, but yeah, when it comes to these movies, basically, 
Uh, that's my educated guess anyway. But it does make me wonder what could have been. As I mentioned before, folks, even if you have a script out, even if uh, you have a crew, you have a sound editor, uh, an editor for the footage, uh, a director, a uh, music composer, uh, okay, somebody to set the stage, somebody to get the makeup done, somebody to get the costumes done and all that. You know, you need, you have everything done. You have to have everything set to go. And that doesn't mean that the they won't put the plug in. Just, unfortunately, this kind of thing does happen quite often, like we were saying earlier, folks. So it's just unfortunate this kind of thing does happen. And just unfortunately, unfortunately, it just, yeah, maybe it was, could have been a good movie and whatnot. So it just leave you a lot to wonder, especially considering the fact the original little creator is this guy, folks. And the thing is that he actually wanted to give Godzilla a 10-year hiatus. I wanted to return to the series in 2005. But unfortunately, he died of a heart attack eventually. And the thing is that he wanted to continue the storyline that was set in this Heisei series of Godzilla films. But just later, unfortunately, he just died. Does this mean he could have picked up the storyline and just tweaked it a little bit? I don't know, maybe. The thing is that he did have, you know, a good colleague, and it was Izuro Honda, whom helped to make some of the original Godzilla films in the, in the original series. And the thing is that he was asked to help to make the Return of Godzilla, which what began the Heisei series. It was the first installment, and which, by the way, I didn't receive all that good reviews either, really. But point being, Ishiro Honda refused to help. He felt that Godzilla himself sort of permanently stayed in the past because honestly, he didn't like what happened with Godzilla during the 1970s. He really did not like these films, like at all. So it just leaves you to wonder what could have been even, even more. We should wonder even further, I guess you can say. But yeah, of course, having creative differences is actually pretty common in the film industry, which just can plague problems in your project. Not that I'm trying to discourage anybody from making movies or video games or comics or whatever. I'm just pointing that out. It just, these things happen, unfortunately. But yeah, folks, um, as always, thanks for watching and take care. Until next time, see ya. Oh yeah, later.